Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to go over defrost timers and how to check them. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. Today we're going to be going over defrost timers and how to check them. Just a heads up, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week, and let's get straight into it. Let's begin by going over the control. I always mention attention to detail will take you very far. So let's go ahead and see what we can actually read. So here it says 8 hour, 20 minutes. That means we have an 8 hour runtime and a 20 minute defrost. You might find some other timers with different settings. If we look at this control, we can see this one is for six hours of runtime and a 21 minute defrost. So this may vary. It says we are good for 15 amps. This is rated for 120 volts AC. This is our model number. It is made in China, we run at 60 Hertz. It's made by Subco and it's a heavy duty control. And here we have a small wiring diagram and one, two, three, four contacts. Let's begin by going over our four points of contact and this small wiring diagram. Typically, these numbers represent the same thing in most controls. The only time where things might be different is two and four might be opposite of each other, but always refer to the specific control you are using. But for the most part, all of these are typically the same in any situation. Two is going to be for your defrost. One is your common or your neutral. Four is going to be for your cycle, which is gonna energize your compressor. And three is gonna be your timer. And at the same time, this is your power in. So let's explain this. If three is gonna be your power in, you see we have a motor here. This is our timer motor. It's worked by gears. Also, we have a small resistor. This is a symbol for a resistor. And then we come back to neutral, our common. So we always have power flowing through here constantly. So this is a 120 volt control. So here's gonna be our hotline. Goes into our motor through a resistor, back to neutral. So between three and one, we should always have 120 volts. So we have an eight hour runtime and 20 minute defrost. So typically you have power coming out of four for eight hours, which is gonna energize our compressor, condenser fan motor, you know, our evaporators, fan motors always constantly running. So four is a normally closed contact and two is a normally open contact. Two is gonna be our 20 minute defrost and four is gonna be our eight hour runtime. So typically when this starts, our timer mode is gonna start and we're gonna be in cooling mode. So four is gonna energize our compressor, so two, is our defrost heater, normally open contact. One is our common or neutral. Four is our normally closed contact or our cooling circuit. And three is gonna be our power in and our timer. If we look closely here, this is actually the gear for our timer motor. And we can bypass this control or at least bypass either the cooling cycle or the defrost cycle by spinning this with a flathead screwdriver. Before anything, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have resistance between one and three. This is the symbol for a resistor for our motor. So we should have a resistance reading. I opened up the other timer and if we pay attention to right here, this is our resistor. I'm gonna set my meter to ohms. And we're gonna check between one and three. Nothing. 
So right there, we know we have a faulty either resistor or coil. So this control will never work. The gears will never spin as we have no timing function. This is a control that I did pull off a unit and I replaced it with a new one. This is a different timer where I did open the inside just so we can take a better look. If we look here, it says 6.8 kilo ohms. So this is our resistor and we should have that reading. So let's go ahead and check between one on three on this one. We have a reading of 7.46 kilo ohms and that is pretty good. It's not the exact number, but we do have resistance. So we should be reading resistance here as there is a resistor and M is for our motor, but it's actually that coil we saw on the back. We should have a resistance reading here. If you have an OL, like the other control, you have a bad control and you have no timer function. If you look at this resistor, it says 6.8 kilo ohms. So we should have that kind of reading. But if you look right there, it says 3WJ. If you search up 3WJ resistor online, you will find this is an amplifier resistor. So I have seen and I have heard that you actually should be reading microfarads between these terminals. So between one and three, you should have a microfarad reading. Not only should there be resistance, you should also have a microfarad reading. So I have my meter. So it's a microfarads. And let's check between one and three. As you can see, we have 26.7.8 microfarads. So that is something to also check. When checking resistance between one and three, you should have a reading that would indicate a good sign. And if you had OL, it would indicate that it's bad. Also when checking for capacitance for microfarads, you should have a reading and not zero. Here's the control we were originally testing. So between one and three, we had OL. So that means this is a faulty control as there is a break either in the resistor or the coil. We can still continue to troubleshoot as we were able to bypass this function with our screwdriver as we turn the gears. Listen for a click and you're gonna hear the gears turning. Right there, we just heard a click. So this is a long pause here. So this must be our cooling cycle. It's a little hard to turn this. Right there. And now we just went into our defrost cycle. It's going to be a short spin before we hear another click. And then we can confirm everything that was just stated. Exactly. Now we just came out of defrost. All right. So right now we should be in the cooling cycle. So right now we should have continuity between one and four. If power was applied between one and three, the gears would be moving on its own. So after eight hours, we would then go into the next cycle, which is the defrost cycle. So in this situation, we manually bypassed it. I have the meter set to resistance and continuity. My meter reads both at the same time. I short out the leads and we're going to check between one and four. And we do have continuity. In this situation, we manually bypassed it. So we did have continuity between one and four. So neutral and cooling. Now we're gonna bypass this again and we're gonna check the next function, our defrost function, which was right there. Just heard a click. We should not have continuity between two and one. This is our defrost cycle. The meter is set to continuity, it showed out the leads, and we should have continuity between one and two.
All right. Let's go to the next function. Right there, I heard a click. So we shouldn't have continuity here anymore. Awesome. Now we should have the continuity between 1 and 4 because we're back in cooling mode. And there you have it. I thought this would be pretty cool to see. So here is our terminal number 3. Goes into M, which is actually a coil. Then go comes out, goes into this resistor, jumps over, and in this middle point here is 1 our common, our neutral. Then we have these two contacts, one here and one here, right? And this is our common. So pay attention closely. Right now, these two are touching. So this is, we're looking at this backwards. So this is one and this one, one and four are touching. All right, you see? These two are touching. Let's try to do this in focus. I'm going to manually spin the gear. So now we're going through our eight hours of time of cooling. Boom. Now we're in defrost. And if we pay attention closely, Now these two are touching, right? And this is gonna be terminal number two. One and two are touching, so we're in defrost. Our 20 minutes is gonna go by. And now we're back in cooling. So now, right, we're touching between one and four, as you can see, which is Pretty cool to see. It's important to test these before installing them. And also, if you can see, we have like some corrosion on these contacts. Make sure the contacts are clean while making this test because it can fool you. So you could take like a little piece of sandpaper or so and just sand it down a little bit so you have a good connection. So let's go over a quick recap as well as what we would be looking for if voltage was applied. So first things first, definitely want to check between one and three to see if we have that resistance value unfortunately it doesn't say anywhere what the value should be but just make sure you have resistance and not an ol reading resistance good ol bad from there we're going to be in either one of two modes we're either going to be in cooling mode which is eight hours on this control or in defrost mode which is 20 minutes in this control so Check to see where you have continuity. So let's say we are in the cooling mode. So between one and four, we should have continuity. And we can manually switch the control. And then we should switch over from cooling, which is one and four, to defrost, which is one and two. So then we would have continuity between one and two. Quick recap on our terminals. Two is defrost. One is neutral or common. Four is our cooling cycle. Three is our power in and timer motor. As far as voltage, this is a 120 volt control. So between one and three, you should always have 120 volts. Next, if we are in cooling cycle, you should have voltage coming out of four. If you are in defrost, you should have voltage coming out of two. And that's pretty much it. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And also don't forget to share this with all your friends. And I'll catch you all next time.